Hello, my name is David Kersley, a certified SolidWorks application engineer with Go Engineer. In this video, we will create a multi body design, a golf ball, by creating custom axes using planes and circular patterns. So, if we look at our golf ball, we can see that we've got a, a set of pattern, patterns that basically started with one dimple, and then I patterned it ar around the perimeter of this, uh, of this uh, golf ball. And we did it kind of a unique way, and I kind of wanted to walk you through how, why I created that. But first, let's get into kind of creating the planes and um, uh, using the sketch profile to create the multi multi body uh, design. And if you look at most golf balls today on the market, most of them are multi construct uh, layers thick. And these golf balls, uh, depending on the material density, the number of layers, and the materials used, depends on how the golf ball reacts. At impact, whether it's a driver or an iron or a wedge or, or even the putter for that matter. So in this one, we have a five piece. We just did a core and then we have a, a layer over it, a red layer with a different material just to kind of break the, the visual representation of it. And then we have a, a, a layer here. And then, of course, we have our outer layer here. So uh, we got a, a, a five piece golf ball here, uh, no brand in particular. So we just have a golf ball. And let's talk about how we got there. So uh, I'm going to close this one down. We're going to open up a, a new file, basically. We have nothing going on over here. And, and I want to turn on, I want to see my original plane. So if I hit that little arrow that was up here, I can see my planes. And if I just pick on each one of these planes, these planes are now visible. And what I want to do is, if you remember back to Essentials class, we talk about actually creating uh, axes using planes. And when you click on the Reference Geometry button, you have a axis right here. When I pick on axis, I can come over here and pick on two planes. When I pick on two planes, it asks me for which two planes do I want to pick and where am I going to put that axis. So just for this example, I'm going to pick front plane and right plane. And notice how I've got this little yellow preview line. It's creating an axis right where these two planes intersect. Perfect. So I hit green check OK, and I've got this axis. Now, if you create this and all of a sudden you don't see the axis under hide show items, and it may look like this, where you don't see it. And you're like, hey, I've got this blue. It's turned on, but I don't see it. Again, under the visibility or hide show items, you can click on this little icon right here. It says view axes. And when I pick on it, now my axes is now view, uh, uh, visible to me. And then, so if I want to create additional planes and I want to create axes out here, I absolutely can. Just click on plane. Uh, pick on this front plane. Let's make three of them. We'll make them 20 millimeters apart. Hey, OK. And anywhere, again, that these two intersect with, anywhere these two planes intersect, I can create an axis. So let's do reference geometry. We'll do axis again. And I'm going to click plane four and the vertical axis. And again, we can see that it's creating a, a, an axis there. And maybe I wanted to do one in a horizontal direction here. So again, I'm going to pick plane uh, three and my top plane. And what I do, you can see that it's previewing right there along where those two axes are created. So for the moment, I'm going to click on these two. They're going to get grayed out, and I've turned them off. And I started a sketch of just the profile here. And I want to do a multi-body design. I'll turn these planes off, make it a little cleaner to see here as well. And I've got this sketch here. This is kind of, I'm going to draw a quadrant of the golf ball, and I'm going to rotate it around this axis here. And before I do that, I want to put all my sketches in one sketch for all my layers. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to right-click, I'm going to edit this sketch, and I'm going to do offset entities. And when I do offset entities, I'm going to pick this line here. And you'll notice that you're getting a preview line. It's previewing to the outside, right? And I actually want to reverse that. Now, you may have select chain, and you'll see that it's previewing inside. We want to unselect select chain. We want to select cap ends and lines. And what that's going to do is going to create a boundary or a contour region right there. So we're going to say, OK. Let's do another one, offset entities. We're going to offset this entity. Uh, let's reverse that direction so we can see that preview line on the inside. And just for uh, one more, we'll do offset entities and we'll change it to 1.0. I'm going to grab this line and we're going to pick that line, say OK. Make sure we reverse it, put it to the inside, say OK. Now what's going to happen is we want to do a multi-body design off this one sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Features and I'm going to re Revolve Boss Base. And it's going to say, what's my axis of revolution? And I'm going to pick my vertical axis here. And it's going to say, what's my selected contour? Uh, and I'm going to say, OK. I'm going to grab this little region right here. And it rotates just that perimeter profile that we created there. So I say, OK. 
And if we look back, we've got this original sketch here. If I click on it, and I've used the shortcut key. So if I hit the S key on my on my mouse here, I've got all kinds of things under here. I've got like circular patterns, axes, mirrors. I'm going to click on Revolve Boss Base. And when I do, it's going to ask me for, I'm going to come over here and pick a selected contour. And let's just pick this guy here. And my axis of revolution, again, be the vertical one. I say, okay. And let's take a look. Let's do a cross section. And now we got a really thick part, but what happened? So let's go back to our part and let's make sure that we uncheck merged results. Because again, I want this to be a multi-layer construction for that golf ball. So, and if I don't like the image quality options, uh, document property, uh, image quality, and let's turn this guy all the way over, hit OK. So now we got a nice smooth profile. And that's how I created that, that five or multi-layer design for the original golf ball. So I created some axes and planes, uh, no different than what we did here. And then I just used one sketch and just did a revolve off of it. And again, it was all based off this one sketch here. So let's go back over and look at our golf ball for a second. And let's kind of roll back on this guy. This is a completed design. Let's roll back a little bit how we got there. Again, uh, we look at it. Again, I started with just this single sketch and started revolving it around. Uh, I put all of my, my layers or underneath this one folder here. And then I went ahead and created my axes. And, I, and what I did was like this FP to RP just says that this is a relationship between the front plane and my right plane. So I went ahead and named them. And the way you do that is just click on them and you hit the F2 key. And as you type in something, I can type in dash two or something like that. And it renames that axis. And so if I want to see it, just click on each one of these axes and they turn blue. And again, I've got them turned on in the visibility right here. And so what I did at the next point was create a little dimple here at the top. And I just did a revolve cut of a dimple uh, using my front plane. And uh, there's the sketch for that guy. I just kind of created him and revolved him around this axis. And there's the first dimple. And here's where it kind of gets tricky is that I can go ahead and do a circular pattern. And I could say, hey, I want to do this original one, this original, around this axis. So I'm going to pick this axis. And it's going to ask me for my features and face. I'm going to pick this dimple. And I'm going to pick nine of them. And I'm going to set it at 10 degrees. I'm going to say nine. And we're going to set this at 90 degrees. And there's my, each one of these is now I got nine, 90 degrees. So each one of them's at 10. You'll notice that this ball, this dimple is actually being cut right in half. And I've got all these patterns. And this is great. This is a great easy way to do this. And it'll absolutely work, but it won't work for us. Because what's going to happen is when I then go and I pattern, this one might need five dimples. This one's going to need like 12 and 15 and 21, all the way up to like 30 some here. Well, I don't really have control over each one of these dimples. So the way I had to do it was I just did them one at a time. I made a pattern and I patterned each one of these around. And the way I did that was I just took the seed, I patterned it, I picked this plane here, and I said I wanted to do two instances of it at 10 degrees. And then I did the next one. I did that one at 20 degrees. And now it puts a seed and I've got another one at 20, then at 30, 40, 50, all the way down to 90. And again, the reason I did that is I want to control these circular. So it looks like this. And now what I want to do is I want to control, I want to revolve around this axis. And this is an axis between my top plane and my right plane. How do I know? Because I've got TP-RP, and that helps me know that's between my top plane and my right plane. So again, I'm going to take a, a circular pattern, and I did a revolve. And so let's edit that feature. And I did it, and I did six instances of it, 360 degrees, and there's my six dimples. And I just kind of repeated that. Uh, we'll go down here maybe to, to pattern four. If we look at pattern four and I fit that feature, that one actually has 23 instances of those dimples all the way around. So, uh, again, depending on the diameter of your golf ball at that point, it depends on how many um, dimples you may need in that pattern. So I ended up with all of them. I've got half of my ball uh, designed. And then all I did was a mirror bodies. And I did the mirror there's our golf ball. I'm going to turn these planes off or these axes off. So there's our golf ball. And I just did a little fillet to kind of break the edges of the surface so um, we can create our golf ball there.
So uh, again, I hope this was helpful to you. And this is how you would use axes and planes um, um, and uh, circular patterns to create a golf ball. Um, this has been David Kersley with Go Engineer. I hope you found this SolidWorks tutorial helpful. Please check out our Go Engineer YouTube library or visit our website to enroll in classes near you at goengineer.com.